Global Virtual User Group. I'm really excited that you're here today. We're going to get started in a second. I'm Heather Lamb. So we'll get started in just a second. We're going to give the people a few minutes to get connected. So let me get this going. Like I said, I'm glad um, that you're joining us today. I'm Heather Lamb, the um, host of the Smart Table Virtual User Group, and I am doing this um, previously. If you joined us last year, you'll well recall that it was myself and Nick Nicholson, and unfortunately, Nick is no longer with Smart, so he might be joining us. He's doing some other things, so he might join these at some point with um, in his new role. But um, sad, but glad. It's a. It's kind of a. Um, hard thing, but we're gonna we're gonna move forward. So glad that you're here today. And if you've not ever joined the virtual webinars in any capacity, this one is a little bit different in that I try to make these as conversation as very informal that we can because this is almost like me being live in front of you. So trying to do that, um, it is monthly sessions. So let me go to the next page and. Who am I? I am the Smart Education Consultant in Texas. So if you hear, those of you that aren't from Texas, if you hear if I have a little y'all or some Texas twang going on, that's um, who I am. I am on Twitter, so if you are on Twitter and you want to follow me, it's Heather Lamb 8 So I'd love for, for you to follow me. I post things out there or I retweet things and um, love Twitter and if you are not on it I would encourage you to look at it. It is probably I think if I were to list my top five professional development opportunities I think Twitter would be other one two or three. Um, I have learned so much that from the vast the majority of people out there and I don't have to do the work I just follow people and listen and link and learn. So I love that I would encourage you to look they have these chat sessions that happened that happen all the time. So I'm on there, so a lot of stuff I forward out or I tweet out um, to people. So if you're on there, I'd love for, to, for you to follow me so you can see all the great conversations, um, digital conversations, I guess. The other thing that I wanted to let you know, my contact information is there as well as my um, email address. I phone is probably the least, probably best way to contact me only because I'm rarely in the office. So if you have a question about something I tell you today or you just have a question in general, let me know. I'm going to encourage you to contact, if you're having some technical problems with your table, I'm going to encourage you to contact tech support or the resources that are available. But um, if you just have something that you want to ask or something I did, please let me know. I do have a website, Heather's Digital Dashboard, that I'll go to in just a minute. Um, previously, I had a different web address, but if you've ever used Mobile Me, you know that that closed, and it closed, even though they said it was going to close, it closed abruptly, so I had to change my host. And this is my new website, heathersdigitaldashboard.com. I will be posting, so through the, the really the great thing about GoToWebinar is that I'm able to record these these sessions and post them and they'll stay live for a couple of weeks and go to webinar while I'm getting my website up to date and, and I've got a few more things I need to do because I noticed something today that wasn't right. But I encourage you to go to that. Besides the fact that it's got table resources, please use those resources if you're looking for um, other resources. I, do, I lead a Texas webinar every month and have some pretty phenomenal teachers that join me at just like the table webinar. but. Um, and so the resources, are, I'm actually linking my videos to YouTube now, so we'll talk about that um, to help you. So just a lot of different ways. I know teachers' time, I'm a former educator, and I know your time is so valuable, so I want to provide that, those digital footprints and those places that you can find things at point of need. So how can you participate, as Trina did, she, she was a perfect example, she, she asked a question. So the, she, there is a question box um, on, your, on your area, in your dialog box, I guess is what you call that. But you can ask me questions. Now I'm going to, because I'm doing this alone now, I'm going to try to answer your questions, but sometimes, I mean, I'm a queen of multitasker, those of you that know me. 
um, know that, but um, I also am going to try to acknowledge your questions and get better at doing this by myself, and so I'm going to hopefully be able to answer your questions. And then next month, I think I might do that today's meet so we can have that back channel. A back channel, if you're not familiar, is really a side conversation. So you guys are so strong in what you do, so the side conversation that you can say, hey, I have an example, or this is a great link, or something like that. So next month, stay tuned for the back channel, but today I just wanted to see how we were going, and plus this is the first one we've done since I think April of last of this past school year, so we've been taking a huge hiatus. But if you have a question or you need clarification, in your, in your panel there's a question area. That's one way you can ask questions. So if you don't want to talk, you can type. But there is a raise your hand feature, and I'm going to try to watch you. And if you have a question that you'd like to know, It'll signify or acknowledge me, and there's you can raise your hand. So if you've got a, a speaker or a wireless um, mic or something, you can actually ask your question, and I would love it. Traditionally, we don't have people really saying too much, and that seems to be, I heard someone else say, people just don't like to talk on things. So it's not just me, but I'd love to hear your voice, especially since I'm a solitary host here, but I'd love to hear your voice, and to, if you if you have questions, this, this stuff will be posted. Um, I'll go to my website, so as I said, the other value of this is that, and please tell your colleagues and share this, because this is the best thing, is if you don't, if you sign up and you can't join live, the sessions are recorded, so the best thing about this is it kind of self-manages. I if you can't, if you sign up, you will get an email after the fact that says, hey, sorry, we missed you. Here's a link to the recording, and you can go watch it on your time. I'd love to have you here live because then you get the, you know, the chance to ask the questions, but I do value that you're, you're busy and things. So that's another way to, to find these resources. So encourage your colleagues. Encourage people that you know might have a smart table, or even, you know, if you're looking for a smart table. So that's just how can you participate. And then why do we do this? You know, it's really to collectively create, to share, to build skills, to share best practices, and really to network. So um, it's it's kind of single. It, it, I mean, it's really networking, so that's where the back channel will really come into play because we can kind of connect. And since, you know, usually we're in Texas, but we're this bigger, broader audience. I mean, I even had someone sign on from overseas. So I don't. it's nighttime or morning, I think, there. So she's going to go back and listen to it on another time, which is perfectly okay. So um, it's it's just a really neat platform. So what are we talking? Well, I've kind of welcomed you back, and we really did. We had a hiatus, and it was just the timing and everything else to, to, to get at least going. So I've talked about the purpose. I've talked about how, you know, how we can, I can include you or you can interact. Um, basically, this session today is going to be a lot of review. I've had a lot of people ask me questions, so I'm going to review a lot of things and just remind you of some things. Talk about Smart Notebook 11 and the table, remind you of the third-party apps, things like that, and just do a quick example. And I already see the wrong date right here, so I'm going to fix that. So, you know, our next session is actually going to be October 18th, so I'm going to fix that before we get any, because today, next week is not, that's not the right date, so I'm doing a Julian webinars, but that one's October 18th is going to be the next session. So, and I'm going to do a make it and take it. So last year we had some really good success with, um, actually, if you've ever done a make it, take it, it's, I'm going to be sending out some resources, and during the webinar, we'll put them together, so you'll actually have some application time. So if you're new to the table, new to the, to the user group, new to the toolkit, this will hopefully help you to better use it, and ultimately have those really, really great experiences for your students. So um, the table is, I'll, since I'm doing this, I probably would, you would understand that it's, it's probably one of my most favorite products that we have. I've used a smart board for, I was fortunate, so I actually taught third, fourth, and fifth grade, then I was a media specialist, and I had a smart board, a 500 series board, and then my district had 300 series boards, so if any of you know the history, that's a long time ago, so I've actually been familiar with smart products for probably 14 years or so, so a long time, and the table is really one of those things that I've just I've latched onto, and, and it's, it just provides some really incredible learning opportunities for kids in that communication and that collaboration. So 
that's the, the thing on that. So let's, we're going to start off because for some of you this may be new. So I want to really revisit some resources. So um, the, we're going to talk about training in PD. So the first thing I'm going to go to, and I already have it up here. So whoops, maybe I didn't. Uh, let's see, let me go in here. So I went to the Smart Exchange first. So I could have linked there. And I could have had used Smart Notebook 11, the link. So let me add a new page. And I'm going to show you a little trick. So I'm going to go to our website, smarttech.com. And I, I have it linked, but sometimes people don't put two T's in. So I just wanted to type it so you could see it. So if I go to smarttech.com, that's our main website. And on our website, You'll see, slowly, slowly says the sloth. All right, so up here, there is right up here under resources that I have. So I can click on, so that resources tab right there. And I'm using, in Notebook 11, there's a, the um, Smart Ink is, is there. And with Smart Ink, I can actually manipulate over. So that's a really cool feature of Notebook 11 if you have a smart board. But um, I can, I'm going to click on the Resources tab, and I'm going to go to Training and Professional Development. So rather just, just going to link. So and then down here, so I'm going to scroll down and come down where it says Training by Product. So just down your page a little bit. And I'm going to come over to the Smart Table Learning Center. And you could do this with any of our products. So here's what usually happens is teachers go do this and then they say, Heather, okay, there's a lot of stuff on this page. So is there an easier way to find what I'm looking for? I'm not sure if you knew this, but I've been sharing this because I think as a former librarian, you know, really refining your results is, is beneficial. So there's a little button, fine tune your results. So that's really what I want to do. So I'm going to X out of that, and I'm going to fine tune my results. And when I do this, the, all the products that we have come up. And notice it already goes to Smart Table, but that's great. That's what I want. But if you're really looking to know how I use that Smart Ink, if you're up to Notebook 11, or if you just want to know about Notebook, this is really, that's a key. You know, I only want the free stuff. I don't have time to go to anything right now. I just want the free stuff, and I want to go to only education. And then from this point, um, I want to refine my results. So that big long list then comes down to this. So those of you that haven't done that, I would highly encourage that because especially if you're if you do any training, this is a little less maybe scary than looking at that huge list. So if you're looking for some technical training, you know, how do you adjust that projector in the table? Um, this is a flash video. What about your, your the UPS, that battery? So the new tables, they don't have that, but the, the other tables have this UPS in it. So that uninterrupted uninter power source. And then how do you video how to install it? If you've got a newer table, you won't have to worry about that. Just a thing about that uninterrupted power source, source, what I always thought was it protected the, um, the projector. It doesn't project, it doesn't, it really is protecting the computer. Because we know that if you don't shut the table down properly, then after a while, that's like, pulling the plug on a computer over and over and over again. And that's not good for the computers. So if you're a teacher, you always want to make sure that you're properly shutting down the table. And if you're a, a person that works with teachers, helping them to understand that proper shutdown. And also, I've had teachers that actually shut the table down and then just pull the plug. Well, make sure that you're listening for that fan in the table. And make sure that that fan isn't isn't still running because if the fan is still running, really it's not ready to shut down. When you don't hear the fan, then you're ready to pull the plug. And that's that's really, you won't have problems. What happens if people pull the plug is it actually, it's got a projector in there, it's got the computer in there, and if you break the cycle, then you might have to go inside the table and re-engage the cycle because there's a cycle that everything turns on and everything turns off and the fan is the last thing. If you've got a version 1 table, this is probably more important for you to hear because it doesn't have a button on the side and then you always did have to pull the plug. It doesn't have a, a side on button. So 
it, that was more important. So we've had some instances where that table, the, the plug is pulled before it's ready. So just a, a word of caution on that. And then, you know, working with the table, the toolkit. So, um, so I can come over here. And here, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today, these are where you can find those resources. And then if do you want to, um, do you want to learn more about the table? And so these are videos. So if you're needing some extra help, more than, more than I'm giving today. And then also those getting started things, PDFs that you can use. And then there's an on-demand webinar. So if you want to watch it once again, and then there's some self-paced webinars that you want. This, was a, this one is actually a long one, 75 minutes. But these are free. Remember, because I said that in my session, I only wanted free resources. So maybe that will help you to understand some things about the table. So let me come down here and let me go back to my file. And then the next thing is, you know, my, my uh, webinar information. What am I doing and where am I posting that? So let me go in here and click. And I'm going to go up here and type Heather's Digital Dashboard. So this is just, like I said, it's a digital dashboard. It really is, um, it's just a kind of one-stop shopping. So if you need some more, I've done the same thing for Notebook 11. So if you, if you don't want to go to the long way, you can click here. I do have a delicious website and stuff. And then I've got, there's where I'm on Twitter. But if I come over here to Smart Table Resources, and I do need to update this because I, um, I have the wrong dates. So I do have the 18th right, but I had to bump it back. Here, but what I'm doing, what I've started doing is pretty neat. It, I used to archive this and archive these sessions in Dropbox. And sometimes the videos were kind of wonky and didn't work well. Well, thankfully, someone, I'm actually back in school and my professor posted a YouTube video and it was an hour and 44 minutes. And I thought, hmm, how did he do that? So I have now asked YouTube. If I'm in good standing, which is good, can I have longer videos? So if you go to my Smart Texas, when you click on the recording link, and I don't think the videos really do well, but you can see, this will actually link you to a YouTube video that is that, that Texas webinar session. So much easier. You don't have to download it. It's just right there. So you, that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm using, I'm kind of using the Smart Table friend. Whoops. So that's, that's there, and be watching, because that's actually what I'm going to do for the table resources as well. All right. So hopefully those resources, they're live, they, you know, will help you help your teachers. And just check that out. I'm, I just try to keep this up to date as, you know, as much as I can. But um, it's got a lot of visitors, and a lot of visitors from all over the world, which is really nifty and neat. So I like that. Hopefully, like I said, that will help you. Um, let me go back to my pages here. I'm trying to negotiate. So there's a little panel up here. So if you see my mouse kind of going, that's what I'm doing is moving between my panel. Um, so what else do I want to remind you about? Well, I looked just the other day, and there's over 1,500 Smart Table activity packs out on the exchange. So if I come up to back to lesson plans, the Smart Exchange. Remember that you need to be joined to the Smart Exchange. You need to be logged into the Smart Exchange. And we'll talk about the learning space next time or in a future session. But you need to be logged into the uh, join the Smart Exchange to, to be able to download. The, you can do it a couple of ways. You can search just if you're looking for, like if I were going to look for back to school, because we're still kind of in that mode, you can search back to school. And when I, what happens is when I do this, wow, well, sometimes I don't know, that, that will pull up in its IE. I'm using Air Explorer. So I'm going to scroll down because that's not exactly how I thought it was going to look. So, but I can scroll down to the side. Normally that box is on the side. But look, there are four table activity packs that have to do with, with um, that. So that's an IE thing that came up. Here's Around the School. Here's September Fun. Direction of movement, shapes and organisms. I'm not really sure how that has to do with back to school, but maybe it does, and that's the starting of the year. So I could do that. Then I could go back just to home, and if I just want to see, just do a just a random, just all search. I'm going to go to file type, and on here I'm going to click on Smart Table Activity Packs. 
and see it's going to do that kind of weird thing. But look, there's 1,500 of them. If I want to see, so we're always going to populate first this fractions one. So I'm going to click on newest first. And now I can see that in the city, in the country is there by Lady Dolan Dolan. So if you, uh, and you've said, oh, I want to see what else she has submitted. I can click on her name and it will pull up only what she has submitted. So she's actually submitted lots of things that are table but notebook files. So that's really odd how that's coming out like that. There's another table activity pack. I can come down here and, and see that she's actually done five activity packs. So it's kind of tricky. So see, that's just, I mean, and then I am, I was like this as a teacher, I'm a big believer of borrowing and not recreating the wheel. So, you know, you might find something in here and maybe you're not using the entire activity pack. So if I click on one, I can, um, well, let me go back and see. So let's go, I want to preview that. Hmm. Let's try that. Okay, now I can preview it. So this IE, but you can see I can preview it and say, oh, well, maybe I don't want all of that, but I do like it. I like the format of it. I think it'll be bring value to what I'm teaching. But I'm going to go ahead and download it. Look how many times it was downloaded. Holy cow. Um, that's great. It's always a very good hint that that must be really good. <laughs> so I would definitely look into that. Um, so that's that's really, you know, using that, the, the resources that are available, I encourage you to do that for notebook, if you have Smart Notebook, or if you're just using the Table Toolkit. So let's start as a review, because I've actually had this question multiple times since we're now people are getting back, or new people are getting the tables in classrooms. So you should all be in Smart Table version 2, which also there's a new update. Now I'm going to say new, it's not really new, it may be new to you, but there is not a new, there's, nothing has been released with Notebook 11 yet. So that's not new, but the table had an update, but I'm still finding people that don't have their table updated to version 2. So how do you tell whether it's updated? You can actually go in on your table and you can go into the, if, when you go to the teacher tools or the teacher menu in the center of the table, and I don't have a picture of that, so maybe I, sh I will, if you have questions about this, but in the center there's the teacher, you know, menu, the center button, you can press on that and go to technical support and it'll tell you which version you're running. And it should be version 2 something something something. The other way you can do is if you download the software, sometimes I've had people that think that they have to get into the table to update because, you know, that's normally what we do with tables and or with computers. With the table, you just need to put the software extracted and everything on your, on your flash drive. And remember, just because I've had many people that teachers have moved on and they've taken that bracelet with them, you don't have to use a, a you don't, you can use any, uh, USB device. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be the bracelet that came with it. So, and you know what? There's a lot of stuff on that bracelet. You can delete everything on there and make it fresh. So it's not something that's re irreplaceable. If everything on there is replaceable. It's just a, it's a, it's a mechanism or a vehicle to get stuff to your table. So there is, when you download the software, it'll pop up on your table. So this is a picture, and it says, ooh, a software update is available. Do you want to install it? It will uninstall, and I've never opened the table. It will uninstall. It will go through and remove everything it needs to, and it will reinstall what it needs to add and adapt and all of that stuff. So if you've got someone that's opening up. Now, our tech support people, I have had to open it up and do something, but I not very often. The other thing is, is if you are someone that works on the tables versus the teacher end, or even if you're the teacher that has to do anything, if you ever have to work within the table or you have to get tech support or those things, I would encourage you to have a USB keyboard and a USB mouse because you're going to have to, it's got a computer in there and you're going to plug those into the side and be able to drive, you know, out. Some people will say, oh, well, I could use that as a computer also. You could, but the value of that isn't going down into the desktop. The value of the table is using the table toolkit and getting those interactions in those multi-touch, multi-user. I've had people ask me, you know, how many kids can touch? Well, 
they are, there's up to, I've seen, gosh, 10 kids touching all at one time, a little kind of mass movement going on, but there's, you know, that's a lot of fingers touching the table. So it's made for those multi-touch, multi-user um, experiences. So nice in that. So hopefully that explains. If you have any questions, I'm watching, so I don't have any questions yet, but if you do have any questions, you know, definitely raise your hand or ask me. Um, so that's the software, and then um, I'm, I will post this just like I did. I will post this file. So the software download, if you were to go out to our website, if I go over to support and go to software downloads, and let's see if I come down. And it's kind of interesting because sometimes we want that, we think, oh, it's a software download, but everything for the table is down with the table. So here it is right here. So it's not up in the software. So everything I need is here. So, and, and there's this, I would download, so there's two things that I need to download. So there's the, the, the software, so I've got right here, download version, the table. So that's actually going to go on the table. And then I have the toolkit. This is going to go on your computer. And then we've got applications, third-party applications that you can download as well. So and then some other people might have had some problems with the runtime. So if, if tech support told you there's a runtime or you have a runtime error, this might be what you need. So these applications right here, is what you will do is download those and then they they you'll get a little icon that you'll double click and it'll add it and I'll talk about that we'll we'll explore that next month in a little more detail but you can download those in some pretty specific directions one thing there is um, and I'm gonna I am gonna talk about it next month but there is a third party app and we've discovered that Windows 7 doesn't um, download it correctly that I know any yet. It's a third-party app that was designed um, to go along with, a, a, well, it's Channel 13 where I'm at, a PBS station. So we'll look at that in just a second. Um, but those are those are some things that, so table, computer, so that computer will need, I did update my um, software. I didn't update my software, but today when I was um, playing around, I hadn't played with it for a little bit, for a couple of weeks, and I noticed that I needed to update my Adobe Air, and when I clicked on the link to download it, it didn't reference over where it needed to go, so I had to just go to the direct link, and then it loaded just fine. So that's, those are those two options for you that you need to um, have for to be able to work on the table and with the toolkit. All right, let me now go to the next page. So orienting, if you haven't oriented your table recently, orienting is a little different. So you want to orient your table. You don't have to do it like the smart board, but you do after you do anything, or I've had an instance where we the table was moved down the hall, and the hall had to be a lots of bricks. And so that jiggling along the bricks from the one end of the hall to the other, I felt like it was probably a good thing. So to do that, you can go in and you'll you'll orient the table by in this on the teacher menu there you can orient it that way um, so you probably if you haven't you should do that and there's a button that says orient um, when you orient the table it's a little bit different than the smart board as well is you're going to press and hold on each of the so when you when you go to the table and you press, you're going to press on each one of those little buttons and then a circle is going to pop up and then it'll beep. So you press and you hold and the circle pops up and you press and hold and the green circle comes up. And then there's actually, this is step one and step two and you do the same thing. You press and you drag, you press and you drag, and you press and you drag and that's going to really allow you to have some really finite points of contact with those tables. So two sessions of the orienting. And if you just keep your board in your table in your room, you probably don't have to orient it um, unless you're in there messing or somebody's messing with the projector after you do that. But or if you go through the hall, like I said, we went through bricks and I just felt like it would probably it takes it doesn't take that long. Um, and you're better you'll have a better experience. Okay. Let's see. So those third-party apps I talked about. So here's basically what happens with the third-party apps is when you download, you'll, um, and I'll talk about the other one, but these are the simple ones. You're going to download it, and actually 
you'll put the download on your bracelet. So you'll plug everything in. So you, you'll do it, have to do it on your table and you'll do it on your computer. When you download into the in the on the icon, you'll download and extract and you actually get an icon like this. And when you double click on it, that will put it into your toolkit that I'll show you. But on the table, so you notice that these are the these are the icons that you'll have. And there's an icon that I have right here that says what's on the bracelet and what's on the table. So when I click here, this says applications and narrow it down. I click on it and it's going to sync that to the table. If you've not ever done it, it it's almost like you have to sync and you're adding that to the table and you only have to do that once. So you're going to add those third party. If you have a question about that, I can walk you through it. There's, a, um, I think there's a video that will show that how to do it. But you add those third party. If you don't have the third party applications on your table and you have them on your toolkit or if you download something, it'll say, hey, I can't read that. It'll read the other applications, just won't read that, those third party applications. You can go in back to that software page and download those. You'll extract it. You'll get this little icon right here that you'll put on your, put that on your bracelet to get that. So you'll You'll put that on the bracelet, plug it in, and then go to your application, select it, and open it, and it syncs it. When you're on your computer, you'll actually double click on that, and it'll sync it in just a second. I'll show you um, what it does. So a, kind of under, the understanding level is probably way high if you've not ever done it, but it, it works. So just trust me, and the icon is the key. With the new version, this is, this is version 2, if you didn't have your bracelet and you needed to change something quickly, you can do what I call the five finger press. So you've got to have two fingers and kids to, wouldn't figure this out. So you actually hold your finger in the center right here, your five fingers. And you have to hold it for, I think it's the 10 seconds or so. And when you do, your other hand, you're going to get this little icon right here. And when you get that icon, you're going to, so you're still holding your hand, so it's not two, it's not one hand. You're going to hold your hand, left hand down or right hand, whichever. And then with the other hand, you're going to press on this. And when you do that, it takes you to the teacher menu without plugging in. And then to get it out, you'll do the same reverse. And that's to repeat to toggle between the menus. So that's a one-two step. All right. Hope that, that you ought to try that out because it's kind of nifty um, in that you don't have to go in between and have that USB drive. Told you this was kind of kind of be a review. So um, there's some examples of, of the toolkit. So if you want, these are your, so if you start thinking about if you've used Notebook before, so let's just kind of think about Notebook. Notebook uses, um, or the Smart Board uses Smart Notebook. If you've never, if you don't have Smart Boards, that's okay because it's easy to use and easy to learn, not hard. But if I start looking at this, the toolkit, what, what happens is this, we have table activity pack. So this whole thing is an activity pack, and within it, we have applications, and with each application, they could there could be multiple activities. So it's kind of a hierarchy of things. So that's that's really what when you're on the table, you're reading an activity pack, and it's full of multiple applications that are full of activities. So one activity, if I say there's fifteen over fifteen hundred activity packs, one activity pack can have multiple opportunities for kids. So really neat, and that I can. You know, I it and well here's something I was telling someone to remember is your table traditionally is a center. So someone, because you can use Smart Notebook on with version two. So someone had a 30 page notebook file that they were using, and I said, Well, wait, let's think about that. So I always say for teachers, for planning, if you have 30 pages, that's probably gonna take you about 30 at least 30 or 45 minutes. You're not going to put a student or students on a table for that long, I wouldn't guess, unless you had a specific reason. So a center is usually, you know, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. So you start thinking about how you're going to structure your activity packs. There isn't 
So the activity packs, there's not a scaffolding hierarchy, but there's you know ways around. You could have the activity pack that you're going to use for Monday, and then you start scaffolding yourself. So you set, you start with the same hole, and you start breaking it down. So you have the same activity pack for Monday, and then you, you've taken something away or added it. So you might end up with five versions of that same activity pack, but it's scaffolded to help the kids. So I can't scaffold within that one, but I can work it and, and get some different levels that I need for my students. So something new with version 2 that we've known is that puzzle, people like the puzzle applications, kind of tangrams. So with version 2, you'll have puzzle application that you can. But notice you can't customize it, but a lot of people like that, so they wrote that into the code. All right, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to open up, I opened up my toolkit. So let's make sure it's going to open before I start talking about the document camera. Whoopsie. Okay, so here's my toolkit. So here's my activity pack, basically. So let's just kind of talk about the structures of this. So this is the toolkit. I'm going to build in the toolkit. All the representations, everything's here. I'm going to build in the toolkit. I'm going to save to my flash drive, to my USB drive, and I'm going to sync it to the table. So that's the process. You could, you can't, there's not a, well, there is a way with Smart Sync. You could actually send the smart table activity pack to the table virtually, but that's going to be dependent on your network. So unless you have smart sync loaded and you've used smart sync, the better option right now might be that you want to just do a, a manual sync of the activity pack to the table. But there is a way. The table comes with smart sync. And if you've not ever used smart sync, um, I might get, our, we had a person last year that uses smart sync with their table, and I may reach out to her again to ask her if she'd be a panelist on our on our event so we could um, get her to talk about her expertise with using smart sync and the table. So she really did it nicely. So the the this is my table toolkit that I've loaded. So structurally we've got our menu button. We can open, we can save all, save as. So a minute ago when I was talking about the hierarchy, I might have this saved five times, but I might do a file save as Monday, file save as Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so I can get that scaffolding. These are my applications. So I've got hot spaces, hot spots. So these are all my applications that I have. You'll notice that when I'm when I'm looking through here. So I have addition, addition plus, hot spaces, hot spots, image, well, um, media, multiple choice, and paint. Those are called what we call our default applications. And then I've added some third-party apps. So the third-party apps that we saw a minute ago, Image Reveal is a third-party app. So when I was talking to you about that green icon, what I did is on my computer, I had that green icon, I double click with the table toolkit closed, it'll open it and adds it to my list of available applications. I can do that again for narrow it down. I can do, Notebook is actually a default app. Um, I can do, I don't have to add paint or puzzle, those are defaults. Story stage is um, something we have. We only have one activity that's built for story stage by Scholastic, and it is Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but it's pretty cute. You can actually record your voice, so we'll, we'll talk. I'll, I'm going to highlight some of these throughout the, this coming months, but you, you do that the same way. You download it, and then you add it. Super Y is the, Super Y is the application that I talked about. It is a third-party application that is done by a company for us, and you can download it. Now, I will encourage you on, on SuperY that you might not want your, your Smart Table Activity Pack to be very robust in that a lot of stuff on it, it's very independent by itself because it demands a lot of memory, so if your computer is a little laggy, you might not have enough memory to support you know every single application. You can only have eight but I would be cautious and maybe just have a couple. But when I use Super Y, and I'll, I have to go and I'll, on, the, on the file that I save, Super Y, you have to go out. It's not a third-party app that you can load from those, the software downloads. So I'll have the link included. But if I added Super Y, this is going to take me out to a customized page. Whoops. Let me get rid of all of this. So that's what, with Smart Ink. So if I get, I can take these and get rid of Smart Ink and, um, and get rid of those. But let's see, it's 
taking a little bit of time. Oh, there it goes. So this is the customize. It's actually going to a website to download. So you can see that these I can customize. Do I want it easy, medium, hard? I would really encourage you to play around with this. So I'll have and I'll I'll put in the follow-up email where this link is. So pretty neato. It goes along with um, the Super Y channel 13 is what it is here, the PBS station. So I can take that. If I come back to home, one of the things I wanted to talk about is um, notebook. So you're probably wondering about notebook and version 2 and all of that. So here's the thing about notebook and notebook 11. This table only supports version 10.8. So those those features, those techniques, if you're running Smart Notebook, those features and those techniques such as the, um, the Creative Pen that is the cute pen that you've customized. You can use the Creative Pen, but you can't, the, the Customize won't work. So think about it this way. Anything that's specific that you didn't see in version 10.8 won't work on this until, and the other question that I've received is can I load version 11 on my table? No, because the version that's loaded with the toolkit reads, it's got the coding and the programming and all of that to read it. It's coming, so um, it's coming and I hope next month I'll have the exact kind of, or generally, I think it's going to be in the spring sometime, but that's when it's coming with that new version, but it will, so just know and if you're working on with teachers, just have remind them that any features, um, the activity builder won't work, but lesson activity toolkit will work. So you still have some really good opportunities using the lesson activity toolkit. So um, the internet browser, um, things that are specific to Notebook 11. That so if you if, and if you needed to know what are things specific, go on to if you open up a notebook page and you go to the help menu at the top, there's a tutorial that you might have seen. Go on there and that'll tell you kind of a pretty complete list of some of the new features. So if you see it there, um, the fill, some of those things that you that are specific to Notebook 11. So I hope that answers some of your questions that about Notebook 11. I've had that uh, question a few times. So it's anything that's specific to Notebook 11. 10.8 works beautifully on it. Um, it's just Notebook 11 is won't have the coding to read or the programming to read. So stay tuned for some more specifics on that. But you can, so you notice I have this, I have these icons right here. So this is, and I don't know if you knew this, but if I click on that, it'll take me actually here. So when I'm creating, so this is a notebook icon. This is media. And the reason I included media is because I'm going to talk briefly about the document camera. So we have a smart document camera, if you weren't familiar with, and you can actually use that with your table. And I did this um, last November, and I'm going to revisit it because I've had some really neat kind of conversations about using it with kiddos and what you would do with it. So you, to use the smart document document camera, I would need to include the media app, which I'll show you in a second. And then I added the Super Y. Now let's say, oh, I don't want the Super Y today. I'm going to delete that and it's going to say all your work will in Super Y will be removed. And that's okay because I know that's fine. This is the same way if I found an activity pack and I said, oh, I only want, um, I don't want paint in it because that doesn't meet what I need. I can delete those off and I can negotiate. What you can't do with the Table Activity Toolkit as it stands right now is you can't, in Notebook you can actually share between the, the files. You can't, you can only have one instance of the toolkit open at a time. So big feature request, but right as it stands today, I can only have one activity pack open at a time. So, which is okay, but, but um, the sharing between the two isn't, isn't there. I have, so in my, I have my tabs. This is an access to the online activity packs in the, in the exchange. So I have media, and I do have some pictures here, but if I wanted to, I could take those out. So notice I can have 30. This is media is where I would add images and videos. So we're back to school. I'm just trying to throw out some ideas of ways that I would think using video. We're, we're you know, this is targeted for early grades. I've, We've got tables in the higher grades, so 
in you know whatever the level is maybe your kids are struggling to learn the names of the people around the school you could take your your iPhone you could take a, one of those little portable video cameras take some videos around the school they just need to be AVI or WMV and place them on the table and have discussions about who is this and what does this person do I think it could be you know those are some of the applications don't have specific right or wrong answers but they have great opportunities for conversation. So you could use that within media. So media is one of those applications that no right or wrong answer unless you tell them to, to put in a corner or something what you think are applicable pictures. But great opportunities to have those videos. You might have a video that you created. I had a, a last year I created a video or created a lesson activity toolkit to go with this ladybug idea. And I, uh, or not, well it was it was springtime and I took a video off of YouTube that was actually a time lapse of a plant and I converted it using a program um, that I found called Zamzar. It's just Zamzar.com and I converted it and you and saved it into an ABI or a WMV format. And then I just added it to my import. I just added it straight in here and then when it shows it won't show on here, you'll have an X there, but it'll you'll be able to see it on the table and be able to stretch it. You've also got, I'm going to explore these in more detail, but I just really wanted, since it's been such a long delay, I really just wanted to get you back into the swing of things. So when we do the Make It, Take It next week, I'm actually going to do one so we can really talk about what does this enable the Zoom. You know, these are some features. You can add a background. Sometimes if you have a pictures there, you don't want so much of a busy background because it distracts from or detracts from the pictures there. So you can you can change, you can have directions for audio. Remember that it's the first page if you have things. Media only allows you, so you can't have multiple ac activities within media. It's one shot. So you could watch a video and then put something in order, pick characters or something on that. Um, all right, and then we have Smart Notebook. So there's a couple of ways that you can get Smart Notebook. You can actually import it. Um, when you're in Smart Notebook, I'm going to go back to my notebook page right here because I've got some pictures that I'm going to use. So let me, here we go. So here's Smart Notebook. I just, this, I'm going to share this file. I said only supports version 10.8. So you can add um, up to eight notebook files. Remember, be cognizant, again, how many you know, if you have eight files and they're 30 pages long, it's really defeating the purpose because you're going to have to restart or start over. So you might have, you could have eight activities that are one or two pages. So this one, when, you, when you're on, when you're inside on the table, this is what happens. You get this, these little screens right here. And, and so you populate it out by, by, if I look, you can press on this little arrow right here and this will pop out. So you have an arrow button, you have an eraser button, and those of you that know the Smart Notebook, you can do a circle tap on there and it'll erase. Um, you can use a, a document camera in this application as well. Um, and then you have your pen tools. And so, in, and remember we work in the 360 degree environment, so if I wanted to, I could use this little tool to flip this around so that I can see if I needed to, if I had words on this side and pictures on this side, I could flip it around so both people can see. So that hopefully, the smart table, if you're a user that doesn't have smart boards, the smart table includes a license of so the notebook software. So that helps um, cases that we have, maybe you have somebody, or your school is one that doesn't have boards, but they have tables. We have that a lot. Okay, I have any questions or you're just really just candidly watching, I hope. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, but I, you know, hopefully I'm helping you to understand this. So the other thing that, let me come back up here, I just got, I've got about 10 more minutes. So I wanted to, I'm going to go back and show you, we're going to do a little thing with that. But the table will actually support, so these are the things that it will support, it will support the document camera. So in the document camera, so it, I, you have to add the media app, or you can use notebook if you wanted to, but I like the media app. So basically, these are some pictures. I took my document camera, and I plugged it in. So it has to be a smart document camera. Um, and I plugged it in to the table, 
and it will actually acknowledge and recognize. When you plug it in, you've got the media app. So these are pictures from my table. And so when you do this, notice that when you have to open the media app, do you see, do you see this little icon? There's a camera right there. And when you click on that camera, this is what happens. So whatever is under your document camera, you get that image. Here's the coolest thing that I think about the document camera is you can take multiple pictures. Now the pictures don't stay, you don't save them, but let's say you have an activity that you're doing categorizing or sorting. You want the kids, you put a pile of stuff down on the table and you say, I want you to categorize or sort these by color. So pull them apart and then take pictures of all the green or all the squares or all the triangles and then these are actually live pictures. So do you, these were pictures that were on there, but, but if I, I think I have, um, yeah, so here's a per, here's, I, just, I did this, so I have a question. Let's see. Just to clarify, so Adrian, um, so there no, so no, notebook 11, so yeah, great clarification. So, so the features in notebook 11, and I'm going to try this out so I can make sure that I'm telling it right. They, the features that are specific to Notebook 11 won't work. So I'm going to revisit that. I'm going to try it out. Um, I honestly didn't have time to try it, and, and then I decided what my agenda would be the other day and then forgot that I needed to try this. So that is a great question. So the way that I understand it is the features that are specific to Notebook 11 won't work. But they were, if you still, like, um, like if I put in stuff from the gallery and things, those will work. But the features like what's new, the reset the page won't work. Or some of the new, like if I included the um, something that's like the if I made the biggest thing I see is the activity builder. If I make something with the activity builder, that won't work. The file will work, but that that specific activity won't work. So I'm going to table that, and, and I'm going to clarify it, and then I'm going to send an email out. So I hope that it didn't really answer your question, but I'm glad that you asked that because that's a great question. So the features that are specific to Notebook 11 is the way that I understand it. So if I go up here, and maybe I use the calligraphic pen, which we have the calligraphic pen, so, but that's only when you're connected to a board, so that wouldn't be a good example. But let's say I use, oh, I know a perfect example. The magic pen that is now I can do, or the pen that I can fade out, I won't have that feature. The creative pen, if I make a, a fancy creative pen that, like here was one that I made that's a number one, I don't think those will recognize. So I could use these other ones if I had that, if I had used that, because that was specific to Notebook 10 as well. But I am going to come back and I'm going to clarify that. Okay, thanks. They, I'm glad you asked that. So thank you so much for doing that. So here's, let me get rid of this and show you what I did with, whoops. All right. So here's what I did on my, on my document camera. So, um, so I did this. Let me move this out of the way so I can see it. So I took, so see, here's my picture. This is my dining room table. I actually have a table in my living room. So that's not, doesn't sound, I think, overrated that I have that, but I had to play with this. So here's my document camera sitting on my, in my kitchen, or my dining room table. I use this thing called wiki sticks. These are just little waxy things. I took pictures. Do you see over here the pictures that I took? So I took individual pictures of each of these, and then notice how I moved them around, and I spelled words. So just, just a really cool, so I had the kids make letters and took a picture of each letter. So hopefully that helps you to see. It has to use, it's the smart document camera, and I think that it will work on the 280 as well as the 330. So it doesn't have anything to do, because mixed reality is specific if you know our document cameras. So I, I believe, because I shared my, my 280 with someone, and it worked for them. So that's the different versions. But it does have to be a smart document camera to do that. But another reason to look maybe at that, because I think the opportunities there are just incredible. The other thing, and I'm going to explore this a little later too, um, and then I have some pictures of what it means to accept it. So when you put the picture on there, how do you get the pictures? So that's just more of a help. 
for kind of a final before we move into a really quick idea, because we have about five minutes left, the table is 3D ready. So if you don't have, we smart sells 3D tools, and if you don't have 3D tools, your table is 3D ready. So basically, you could go out to the Smart Exchange and download. I downloaded this ladybug. This ladybug, when I say 3D, I have a file that I'll include that you can try this out. So um, here we go. So here's my little ladybug. Notice that this is a three-dimensional ladybug. So pretend that I'm on my table right now. I'm going to be able to manipulate this just like it. And you know, in Notebook, I told you you had those little tools. I could say, ooh, use those tools, and I want you to count the number of legs the ladybug has, or label the, the, the abdomen, or the parts of the ladybug. So that's the feature. That's You put that 3D content in Notebook, and then when you put it on the table, the table is 3D ready, so it will read it. On your computer, if you don't have 3D, the, ta the ladybug will show as a 2D object. But when you put it on the table, it magically will be because the table has the, the programming to accept a 3D content. So pretty neat. You might explore that. Go to the Smart Exchange, and there's some really neat content. And then I, this, I'll, I'm going to do this more with the Make It Take It, but I just wanted you to see how cool it is with this cropping feature. So if I go back to Hotspots, and I just have a couple of minutes, but, you know, it's really easy now. Previously, in our first version of the Table Toolkit, you had to do all this pre-work. Not anymore. So if I want to add a background, a cool way that I can do it, I'll show you how easy this is. So I'm going to minimize all of this, and I'm going to minimize this, and... Let's see. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this again, um, I'm going to do this again next month. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this cropping feature. So note, so this is going to be my background. So this was an activity that I did last year, and I just thought it was cool, and I showed it again, and teachers thought, oh, that's cool. So notice I've got two windows open. I've got my toolkit open right here, and I've got my notebook file. If you don't use notebook, that's okay, because you can do the same thing in PowerPoint. So you can save your PowerPoint as a JPEG, and I'll talk more about that. But watch this. So here's my page right here. This is going to be my background. I'm going to drag, and I'm going to drop it. So I just drag and drop, and now I'm going to minimize this back out. And oh, my computer is kind of tricky and slow. So what I want is notice that this is a cropping feature. So I'm going to explore this a little more, but those pictures that I'm going to add, so the idea with this is it's an, uh, I'm going to match kids' names to pictures. So I can crop. I can't resize, but I can crop. And I'm going to say, oh, look, that looks pretty centered and nice. I'm going to click OK, and there we go. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I am going to open up, and I'm going to find this. I'm going to find this, and I'm going to run out of time here. But I'm going to do the same thing here. And so I have these pictures right here. And so if I wanted to, I could take and I could open these up. I could actually probably just drag them over. So watch this. I could drag this over from this page. Oops. I think, you know what, Adrian? I think that's a Notebook 11 thing. I'm going to have to bring that up. Because used to you could drag and drop, so I can't drag and drop anymore. So that's good to know. But I could open this file up right here, and I'm not going to take the time because it's almost 5 o'clock. But this is what I'll explore next month. So it's going to be like a teaser to you. So I'm going to open this up, and this is what I'll be sending you, something very similar and this. So I'm going to send this out, and we'll practice with this cropping this functionality of the cropping, because it is very nice. You can see what I did with the background, and I could build my hotspots activity. So I, I wanted you, because I had some questions about that. It's a very easy thing. You can just open the file up. You can just save pictures and drag and drop them from JPEGs. There's just multiple ways. But this cropping feature right here will allow me to crop out images and parts of image, so I don't have to do a lot of prep work. So very neat. And then there's a sound feature. We'll use that. 
didn't know how much time I was going to have and how fast it was going to go. So there is a sound pe feature that you can record. You can use notebook. You can use Listen Activity Toolkit. So in answer to Adrian's question about, so I can't use Activity Builder. But you know what? This activity, when I put it on the table, it shows up really great. So try that for a solution. Um, that, that's a really neat solution. All right, so we're pretty much out of time. It's 5.01. I just want to remind you that, that go to my website, and I'll be posting this video to my website. And you know what? I will post this Who Am I activity so you can play with it and stuff, and then we'll break it apart. We'll have October 18th. It's going to be the next session. It is going to be a make it and take it. So if you register, I'll send you an email. Uh, uh, probably I'm going to try it for about a week before, but sometime at least two or three days before, you'll get a file from me that says, hey, you registered for the Talk Smart Table webinar. Here are the resources. Download them because we're going to use these in our session, and we're going to make it and take it. And we're going to make something so that you can practice and play with it. So... Thanks for joining us. It's a little after 5 my time. I know it's later for some people, so I apologize and I hope. We, we, when Nick and I did this, we did a poll, and we are, the feedback was we needed to stick with this time, so I stuck with this time. So if you ever need any help, you know, let me know. Email me. Like I said, if you have technical questions, please email tech support because there, if there's something wrong, they're going to be the ones that can identify it and do a bug report and all those, those good things. But I hope that you can join us um, on the October 18th. If you want to see something, let me know and I'll tie it in. Next month we'll be Make It Take It. We'll explore some of the activity packs. We'll put together a, um, some hot spots, some different things. So be watching for that. And if you can't join live, you'll get the resources and you can practice on your own and watch me afterwards. So if anyone would ever like to, I've already got some people that I hope lined up, but if you'd love to um, ask questions, I'd love to do to have you. If you want to join as a panelist, I'd love to have you share or hear how you're using the table in your classroom. So I hope that next month I'm going to try the back channel as well. So we'll see. I'm going to have, see if I can get somebody to help me um, on these, these things because I can do it, but I, I want to be able to really have that interactive learning. So Adrian, thanks for your question. I'm going to confirm everything. Um, Trina, thanks for joining. Those of you that I know, thanks for being here today. And I enjoyed my session, and I hope you did too. And I look forward to many more. And if you have any questions about what I shared or anything else, email me and let me know how I can help you. And I look forward to chatting with you. Oh, I left out the page. If you need my email, it's just heatherlamb at smarttech.com. I will see you next month. Thank you so much, everyone.